All right, in the previous example, we just learned how we could take a system of equations and put it into a triangular form using the row operations, the elementary row operations. And the order that you want to do them in is right here. So to put a linear system of equations that has three variables in triangular form, you first want to eliminate the x variable in all but the first equation. It gets to stay. And then you want to eliminate y in the last equation. And then finally, if you have to, use multiplication to make all the leader coefficients equal to 1. So, <clears throat> now to make this a little bit easier, rather than having to write down all those x, y's, and z's, we're just going to put all of these numbers into a matrix and do it on matrix operations instead and not have to worry about all those pesky variables. So first of all, the coefficient matrix is going to be combined with the solutions on the end. And uh, just notice that if I don't have a variable in there, I've got a place missing, I'm just going to put a zero there. So I'm going to augment it, which just means add to the answers in the end. See the little vertical on there? You can put it if you, if you want to, but it's not necessary. It's just a visual thing to separate the coefficients from the actual little solutions over there. Okay, so now all of those row operations that we did before all still work with the matrix. It's just that you don't have to worry about all the variables, you're just working with the numbers. And instead of using A, B's, and C's, we're going to use R1, R2, R3 for row 1, row 2, and row 3. Okay, so let's see how this works then in matrix form. So you're going to first take your matrix, or you take your system of equations and write it into matrix form where uh, the first row is called R1, second row R2, third row R3. Put a zero in for anything that might be missing. Okay, and now let's just do the same row operations. I want to get rid of all of the X's except for the top one, so I need to get rid of those two. So what I can do is just add up R1 and R2 to replace R2. So that's what I'm going to do, R1 plus R2, to replace that R2. R1 stays the same, R3 stays the same. My new row 2 becomes a 0 when I add up the x's, a 1 when I add up the y's, and 2 when I add up the z's, and finally 5 as the solution on that side. Now I need to get rid of this 2. And since that 2 is there, I can only use the 1 that's on top in row 1 to get rid of it, but that needs to be a negative 2. So I need to do the row operations as uh, 2 or negative 2 times r1 plus r3. And now what I would do is just like what I did in the previous example, and that is go back to this matrix right here and cross out those numbers and then put in the new numbers after you multiply times negative 2. I'm not going to keep those. I'm just using them so it's very easy for me to add up these columns. So row 1 is going to stay the same, row 2 is going to stay the same. I'm just going to change R3. Negative 2 and 2 is going to be a 0. A 4 and negative 5 is going to be a negative 1. A negative 4 and a 1 is negative 3. And negative 18 and 10 is that negative 8. Okay, so now I have to get rid of this negative 1. And I'm going to use the previous equation to get rid of it. All I have to do is add up R2 and R3 and I'll be there. So row 1 stays the same, row 2 stays the same. When I add up um, 2 and 3 together, 1 and negative 1 gives me a 0. 2 and negative 3 gives me negative 1. And 5 and negative 8 gives me negative 3. Lastly, I need to get rid of the negative 1. That's in the last equation. I can do that by just multiplying everything by negative 1 on that last equation. And now finally, I have it in triangular form.